Here's a challenge. Imagine you are living in medieval times. You are a knight. You have a horse and a lance and ride to your castle. I'm going to pause. Imagine very carefully what your castle will look like. Will it have windows, a large door, a moat, a drawbridge perhaps? One more question. What's the material it's made out of? Maybe you thought of something like this. The truth is that most castles were actually made of wood, not stone. So why in all the pictures we see are castles made of stone? Wood doesn't survive as long as stone, and the castles left standing are mostly made of stone. This is a classic example of something called survivor bias. Certain data are systematically missing from our sample, the wooden castles. In other words, our data cannot capture all the features of the environment that we are measuring. The importance of survivor bias was clearly demonstrated by Abraham Wald, a mathematician during World War II. He was asked to decide on the optimal location of armour plates on Allied bomber planes. Starting agnostically, he first collected data on all bombers that returned and examined them. He visualised the data crudely like this. He gave ground crews this image on the left for them to fill out where bullet holes were seen. The right is with all the bullet holes from the planes that returned. There are two spots where there are no bullet holes though. Wald's insight was to realise that his sample was biased. What was missing? A number of planes never made it back to be recorded in his data. They were shot down. More importantly, it suggests that they were likely shot in those empty spots. This contradicted the US military's conclusion that the most hit areas of the plane needed additional armour. How many times have you heard, they don't make them like they used to, about all kinds of things like manufactured goods, toys? Well, that could be because the ones that were made poorly and stopped working were discarded, and all that we have left were the ones that survived, the better made. What's the problem with all this anyway? On the more harmless side, we will have a bias away from failure. For example, taking restaurants. Restaurants that made it and were successful make us think that the success rate is much higher than it actually is because we're just looking at the ones that were left standing. We may go into business thinking that we're going to survive and be just like the restaurants that have succeeded when in fact we should be looking at the traits of the group as a whole, those who succeeded but also those who didn't. On the more serious end of the scale, we may think that an activity is not as dangerous as it actually is. For instance, if we look at all the people that did well from, say, bullfighting or skydiving, but we failed to look at what happened to those who didn't make it, they won't be around to tell you the stories of failure. Data emissions like this affect the reliability of machine learning or any statistical analysis. Algorithms do not know when the data is biased in this way. In fact, they will still spit out answers and predictions without any concerns, which can have serious consequences, as we've discussed. It requires careful thought from the human expert who is conducting the analysis to identify and deal with this issue. We're Micro Insights. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please subscribe to our channel.